Hi, welcome back to my channel, Beautiful Minutia. If you're new here, my name is Tiffany, and today I wanted to talk about all the books that I got for Christmas. So this includes books that I actually got given to me physically as gifts, but I also got a nice little bit of Christmas money, and I spent almost all of it on books. I know, I know, you're shocked. <laughs> So let's go ahead and jump in. We'll start with the books that my husband gave me for Christmas. So the first one on this list is Demons by Fyodor Dostoevsky. I have not read this one yet, but if you've been here for very long, you know that I am a huge fan of Dostoevsky. He's one of my favorite authors. So this is on my classics TBR for this year. I went ahead and put it on there because I may or may not have known I was getting it for Christmas. So I'm really excited to read this one this year. Although I didn't realize it was quite as big as it is. Like it's like 700 pages long and I didn't know that. <laughs> so it'll take me a little longer to get through than I might have originally thought. The other book that my husband bought me for Christmas is yet another Russian book because he loves me and he knows what I like. And that's Dead Souls by Nikolai Gogol. I've not read any Gogol yet, so I'm looking forward to reading this one. I'd love to read it in the near future, but we'll see as long as I haven't scheduled myself out too much. I would love to be able to get to this one this year. I've heard it's actually quite funny. I also have a couple of YouTube buddies who sent me Christmas gifts, which is really, really sweet. So Amanda from The Curly Reader sent me The Fountains of Silence by Rhoda Cepetis. I have read and own both Between Shades of Grey and Salt to the Sea and love them both. So I'm really looking forward to this one. This one takes place in Spain, which is kind of a different setting for historical fiction. It says it takes place in 1957, so there's a sort of dictatorship going on and I've never read a book in this setting. It seems like most historical fiction books I see tend to be set in World War II. That seems to be like the most common and well-loved setting of historical fiction. So I love being able to find books that are set in a different time period for me to learn about. And I re already know I really like Rudis Petty's writing. So I'm looking forward to diving into this one. And then one of my subscriber friends, Dia, bought me a copy of Nicholas Nickleby by Charles Dickens. Super excited about this because this is one of the Dickens that I have not yet read and it's Dia's favorite. So that's pretty high praise and we enjoy a lot of the same books. So really looking forward to this one. I was really kind of tempted to boot A Tale of Two Cities off my list and read this one instead, but I really do need to read A Tale of Two Cities. I feel like a fake Dickens fan <laughs> by saying I love Dickens and yet I've never read one of his most iconic works. So I will read that one this year, but maybe I can get to this one too. I'm really, really looking forward to reading it. And then uh, my in-laws bought me a couple of books also, and I'm really excited about them. They're both Tolkien oriented. So this one is The Children of Huron or Huron. I'm actually not totally sure on how you pronounce that, but I never even heard of this one until Shelley Swearingen mentioned this in her Lord of the Rings video, which is an awesome video. She has so many Tolkien books and it inspired me. So. I put this on my wish list and was excited to get it for Christmas. It has illustrations by Alan Lee, which I love. I love his illustrations. Um, I don't have it here, but my in-laws also bought my daughter the illustration illustrated edition of The Hobbit, also illustrated by Alan Lee. So that's super exciting. We're always happy to add to our Tolkien collection. And then this Tolkien book they got for me also, this is the Atlas of Middle-earth. This is the coolest book ever. I am so excited that I got this. This was also inspired by Shelly's video. So Shelly, thank you so much for posting a video about all the Lord of the Rings things and making me want them all. I got several for Christmas thanks to you. <laughs> so it's really cool. It has all kinds of different like maps and stuff in here along with explanations and some of them have to do with like battles and stuff or journeys and show like the path that they take and stuff so it's super cool especially for someone who kind of considers themselves a little bit of a lord of the rings nerd like i am okay so all these other books are books that i purchased but i purchased them with christmas money so we're counting them as 
Christmas book hauls. So when I got money for Christmas for books, the very first book that I planned to pick up, and it was the first book I picked up, was The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexander Dumas. I am reading this this year on my classics list, and I thought I was rereading it. But as it turns out, the edition that I own and have owned since a teenager and have read multiple times and even called my favorite book is abridged. And I feel very gypped by that. <laughs> so I made sure to get an unabridged version this time. This is the Word Cloud edition. I love these editions. They have like all these quotes embossed on this kind of like faux leather cover and it's really nice. I remember seeing some people when we did the Les Mis along last summer had um, Les Mis in this edition. One of the first things that I wanted to buy with my Christmas money after The Crown of Monte Cristo is I was really interested in getting some books by Robert K. Massey who has written a lot of books on Russian history and I had seen quite a few recommended by him um, but didn't own any of them. I'm planning on reading The Romanov Sisters by Helen Rappaport this year and so many people were like, you should read Robert K. Massey. And so I made sure to order some of those. And by some of them, I mean three of them. <laughs> I got a whole bunch of them that I ordered. I think I got them from Better World Books, actually. Better World Books is like my favorite online bookseller. They're the best. So I got Peter the Great, Catherine the Great, and then Nicholas and Alexandra. So I'm really excited because I have them all. I think there's one other one he wrote maybe about like the last days of the Romanovs, which maybe I'll get at some point. But since I have one on the Romanov sisters, which I think goes like right up until they all got killed. And I think it includes that as well. So I didn't feel the need to get that one. But all of these ones are ones I have heard wonderful things about. And I'm so excited to read them. And I haven't taken the price stickers off yet. Whoops. Then I have quite a few books that I bought from Half Price Books, which is a uh, used bookseller. It's in person, it's not online. And I used to love going there when we lived in like the Cincinnati area and then we moved out of that area and I never really saw them again. Apparently being back in Kentucky, there are Half Price Books all over the place. So I was super excited to just like incidentally like just drive past one and I was like, we need to go in there. And I had Christmas money. So I got some really great books. So the first one is really beautiful edition of, I'm gonna pronounce it wrong, Pergorio by Honoré de Balzac. Probably saying a lot of that wrong. Um, but anyways, I've heard really great things about this book. I really don't know anything about it. And obviously I can't read the blurb, but I was talking to one of you, I'm trying to remember who, she was talking about French books that she loved and she recommended this one, which I have not read. And it was on my Amazon wish list, and I just happened to find it there. So that was really exciting. And then also speaking of really pretty books, I love editions like this. The pages are gilded and it's just so pretty. This is The Portrait of a Lady by Henry James. I am reading The Turn of the Screw this quarter for the booktube spin. And I've not been a big fan of that book in the past. I've DNF'd it a few times. Obviously this is much larger and I don't know if I will like it more than The Turn of the Screw, but I paid like, I want to say like $1.50 for this book because it was on clearance and then Half Price Books was also doing like a store-wide, I think it was like 25 or 30% off. So I got an amazing deal on this. So it's pretty either way. <laughs> so then I got another classic book by Anthony Trollope. He knew he was right. I think I remember Kaylee from Luminous Libro recommending this book and saying she really liked it. I still have not yet read any Trollope. I'm planning on reading The Warden this year. So hopefully I like Anthony Trollope since I just picked up another one of his books. Running out of room to stack books here. <laughs> Um, the next book that I got is Golden Sun by Pierce Brown. This is book two of the Red Rising series, which I read book one back in November. I did a whole reading vlog on it, so I'll link it in case you want to hear my thoughts. But I am one of the few booktubers that has not uh, read and just adored the series. I finally read Red Rising and really enjoyed it. So I'm looking forward to reading Golden Sun next month, actually. And the last book that I bought at Half Price Books was The Black Stallion by Walter Farley. As much as I loved horses growing up, I actually never read The Black Stallion and never watched the movie. So I don't know if I'll like it. Um, 
I'll probably be wanting to compare it to Black Beauty in some way in my head because I always associate those two together. But I figured that Claire would also really like this book because she really likes horses. And I think this was another book that was also on clearance that I got for like a dollar or something. Oh, I lied. I actually have one more from Half Price Books. So I picked up another stack and this one's on top. This is Assassin's Quest by Robin Hobb. I have the first two books that I got at a library book sale for like a quarter a piece or 10 cents a piece, something like that. They were really cheap. So they didn't have a book three. So I went ahead and picked up this one. It is the mass market edition, but so are the two that I bought. So it will kind of match those. Speaking of library book sale, I have a couple books here from library book sale that I picked up. The first one is James Harriet's Dog Stories. I don't know that these are any different than the book than the stories in like the All Creatures Great and Small series. I feel like they're probably stories that are sprinkled throughout those series, but they're all about dogs, so they're compiled in one collection. I don't really know for sure, but I see James Harriet, and if I don't own it, I just want to pick it up. Then I found a Brandon Sanderson book, and this is actually one that my library was getting rid of, so I really wanted to pick it up because I wouldn't be able to get it from my library if I wanted it. But this is Arcanum Unbounded, and this is like a collection of short stories from the Cosmere of like Stormlight Archive and stuff, so I haven't started Stormlight Archive yet. I hope to this year. But I figured I'd pick this up because it is one that I will want to read at some point. And then the last book that I got from my library book sale, because they only got three. Can you just, can you imagine the restraint that I showed? Uh, the third book that I got was The Worst Hard Time by Timothy Egan. And I have a homeschool friend that I talk to quite frequently on Instagram. And she really loves nonfiction. And this is one of her like most highly recommended nonfictions. And it's about the Dust Bowl, which I really don't know anything about. But I've heard it's really wonderful and a great non-fiction book for people who prefer fiction because it reads a bit more that way. And then I just have a couple more books and these are books that I actually won because of a giveaway hosted by my friend Jessica. Jessica has an amazing bookstagram account. I will link her account down below. You should go follow her. She's amazing. And she did a giveaway and I won, which was really cool. So I got a gift card to the online bookseller of my choice and surprise, surprise, I chose Better World Books because I just love them. Why do the kittens always play when I'm filming in here? I'm sure you can hear that bell. Anyway, so I got three books from Better World Books and one of them is not here yet. And I was like, why has this not been shipped? And then I went online and looked and realized that the seller's sending it from the UK. So no wonder it's taking so much longer. But that book is A Natural History of Dragons. I've wanted to read this book for quite some time since Murphy Napier recommended it. It's basically about an Edwardian woman and then she's studying dragons. And it just sounds so fun and so cool. So I really want to read that one soon. In fact, I put it on my booktube spin. And it didn't make it and I was really hoping it would but it just sounds like a lot of fun. Then the other two books that I got are Wives and Daughters by Elizabeth Gaskell. The only Gaskell I've read so far is North and South and I honestly didn't love that book which is such an unpopular opinion. Everyone loves North and South except for me. Um, I think I need to reread it because I went in with an expectation that was not fair because someone told me it was like Pride and Prejudice, but better. And it's not. But anyways, I would like to reread it because I went in with an expectation that it was going to be something that it wasn't. So I would really like to give it another chance. But most people say that Wives and Daughters is their favorite Elizabeth Gaskell. So I would really, really like to read this one. I heard that the ending is not finished. So I don't, I don't know what that's going to do to me. <laughs> that will cause me to like it a little bit less. But I've heard a lot of people say that this is their favorite. Most notably, Kate Howe talks about this book all the time. And I think Kate has the exact same edition of this. This like pretty Barnes and Noble bright pink edition. And then the last book that I have on here is The Mountain Sing by... I'm not sure I should even attempt to pronounce this name because I'm really terrible at pronouncing names at all. But anyways, it's a Vietnamese author. This book is set during the Vietnam War in Vietnam. So it's a very different perspective than what you might get 
in other historical fictions that are set in the same time period. So I'm really interested in reading this one. A while ago, I heard Danny from Spinelli Speaks talk about this book. And when she did, I immediately put it on my Goodreads TBR because it sounded so good. So I finally got around to like purchasing it because my library does not have a copy because I would just really, really like to read this book. It sounds amazing. So that is my book haul for all the books that I got either for Christmas or with Christmas money. Although I guess the last couple were technically from a giveaway, but I just went ahead and included them anyway. I would love to hear from you down in the comments below. If you've read any of these books, which ones do you think that I should prioritize? And also one of your favorite books that you got for Christmas that you're really looking forward to diving into. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please hit like and also subscribe so you can continue to see more bookish content from me. Now I will see you again next time.